Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be taking a look at some of the top 10 best vintage board game artwork. Now, I say best, but obviously art is very, very subjective. So um, actually what we're talking about here is our favourite artwork on board games, because lots of people do uh, their favourite board games, favourite vintage board games. We're looking at just the artwork today, though. So I'm joined today by Luke from Down From The Attic. Hello. <laughs> and Bernardo from Tabletop Island. Welcome. So what we're going to do is we're just going to probably not really manage to do an exact order of worst to best because it's really, really hard. And there were, I don't know about you guys, but I found that there were lots that I wanted to talk about that just wouldn't fit in those top 10. Yeah, um, I had a good look through what I've got. And obviously there's games as well that I, I don't own, but I have stuck to the games that I do own. And I know you said not about having an order, but I kind of have put mine in an order. So the last one I'm showing is what I deem to be the best yeah, yeah. Uh, vintage board game art. Yeah. I've, I've definitely tried to order mine as much as possible. I think there's some I would maybe switch around at some other point, but I've tried to go for an order as best I can. Same. But I've definitely gone for some games which I don't actually own. I own around about half of what I'm going to be talking about, but I'm just looking at games that... I really wish I owned based purely on what they look like on the box. There we go. Right, let's get us started. And I'm going to go with my number 10, first of all. Uh, and for number 10, I'm going to go for this one here. Dark World, Waddington's 1991. Let me <laughs> nice choice. It's it does the best thing about the game. <laughs> it's 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 not. I I know. Look, that you really 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 don't like this game. I've seen your review for it. It's not that I don't don't like Dark World. I will admit that I have sold Dark World on. It's it's that I, I found the gameplay uh, monotonous for for everything that comes in that box, and it's a wonderful treasure trove of stuff inside that box. <laughs> It only ever plays the one way, whereas a game like Hero Quest, it can be set up to be whatever you want. But I mean, you cannot fault that box art. It is spectacular. I absolutely love this piece of art. This was actually um, painted by Chris Baker. Uh, Chris Baker is an artist that has done a lot of work. Uh, he was responsible for the box artwork for Battle Masters. Uh, he's also done a lot of book covers for the Red Wall book series. And he's also actually a concept artist that's worked on various different movies, uh, such as The Corpse Bride, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Artificial Intelligence. Uh, so he's pretty good at what he does. I, you know, there's lots and lots of different board games that have like big fantasy battle scenes on the front of them. But I just really, really love the way that there is a main focus in this. A lot of the fantasy board games I find are kind of a bit cluttered. There's too much going on, but I really like the composition of this one where it's the manticore and this warrior here in the middle are really, really obvious uh, that that's where your attention's drawn. And we've got really nice lighting on, um, on the musculature on there. Um, and there's just, there's lots and lots of great stuff going on there. Obviously, this is a bit of a terrible copy of this box. It's a bit ripped, but uh, it's really nice. It's got a nice realism to it, um, but it's also got a bit of a cartoony nature as well, which kind of goes with that fantasy theming. So I really do like that. That's what I'm going for. It's unusual with that game that you've got the Manticore as the focus, yeah, that's not like the big bad guy in the game. Like, mm -hmm. it's like the second in command. I've never actually played the game before. This one, I have to say, this I, I got this as an empty box at like a charity shop. Um, it had a completely different game in it. It had um, 
Warhammer quest inside this box, which was a pretty good find, worth a lot more than this game. Yeah. So I don't actually have the stuff to play this game, so I've never played it. But I think, is this guy here that has got a giant rip in front of him, the kind of snake yeah. guy here? He's the main one, I think. Zargon or something like that? Zarkon? It's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I do like that one. Look, what about you? What have you got for number 10 there? Number 10 for me is a little bit different in that it's not art, it's a photograph, but photography can be art. And it's one of my favourite games, one of my earliest games, and it is Ghost Castle. Um, there's just something about the way this is framed and shot how the kids are lit up and how the, you know, the game is front and center that it, it's just perfect. They, they tried to replicate it with the, the, the new ideal version and they did a pretty good job. It's just, it is iconic to me. Like it, it's like kids around a campfire telling ghost stories. Um, I, I love the expressions of the kids. It's not all happy, smiling faces. They look nervous about the skull being dropped down, it's it's wonderful, and obviously it it shows off the game in in all of its glory. Glory, basically, you've got a lot of the art for the game on display, and the art for this game is superb. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of as well of like the old fonts. I think fonts are very important to a theme of a game, and the Ghost Castle font font is. It's perfect, if you ask me. Um, it, I, I just love this box. Um, it's one of my favourites. I do like the font on that. It's kind of like melting candles as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's it's the little things like the. I mean, it's very very eighties, like the jagged haunted. There, it's it's very old typeface sort of stuff but I, I just love this sort of stuff and you know that 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 font has been hand drawn uh, I miss that kind of stuff with modern games you know it's a lot easier to get text packs uh, and have the design work done for you but somebody drew this and yeah I, I, I love all that sort of stuff um, this is a classic for me absolute classic but like I said it's Photography is art as well, so uh, it's it's an unusual one to start off with. I grant you that. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. I think yeah. if I was to go for a board game, the artwork on the actual board game, the board itself, Ghost Castle would probably be my number one choice. Oh, it's beautiful. Art, yeah, the artwork on the walls and things is phenomenal, definitely. That creepy tree at the start terrified me as a kid. Yeah, totally. <laughs> terrified me. <laughs> but yeah that's my number 10 okay Thank Barnardo you. number 10 for you number 10 is the worst game in my collection mark my words um, I think it has the greatest artwork and it will forever be a meme on my channel I mentioned it to you guys earlier but I didn't say the name I want to bite your finger someone just uh, look at look at the beauty of that art it is like hand painted like those classic 80s movie posters, the arrows pointing directly at the brand. What? They yes, literally somebody put the over that. here. That's nice. The font choice is really well done, obviously, as you mentioned before, fits the theme. Uh, and I do like that they kept it the Dracula game, but it's more of a fancy cursive. Typically, I would frown upon that in like graphic design as a designer. Um, but I really like the aesthetic on this specific game. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of ooh, the details. As you can see, like the skull, the snake, see his foot, the clock. It looks really well aged. It is nice. Cast the shadow on the on the clock itself. They really added a lot of 3D elements to that. Like, ooh, his freaky eyes. Um, obviously, the back, not so fun why it's on the bottom of my list because i wish there was more art i don't remember no there's nothing on the inside as well um yeah this not a great game of any sort um i don't yeah i don't 
I, I don't have you anything. Just send it, send it over this. Yeah, thing. yeah, I oh. knew you liked it. it. But I love Dracula, so I'm a big Dracula yeah. fan, and there might be a trend here, but we'll see. Is that the game yeah. with the felt tip pens where it bites and leaves the red marks? Yeah. Yeah, real cute, real cute. <laughs> yeah. The artworks on that is really nice. It's very kind of like the 1930s kind of movie posters and like ham British hammer horror. The kind yes. of poster that you got for that, your classic universal monsters, all of those things. Great colors on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only the game was great. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go for number nine then. Number nine for me is uh, one which I don't actually own. Well, I say I don't own it. I don't have this particular version of it. I've got there's. A couple of different releases of this game have come out over the years. I've got the second edition, uh, which I play. Love it as a game. The box artwork, though, on the first edition is, in my opinion, much better. Here is what I am going for, for number nine. First edition, Space Hulk. That came out... Oh, in 19 true. Oh, showing. Yeah, I came, I came out in 1989, um, produced by Games Workshop. Um, and you can see on the front there, uh, basically in the game, there are two factions. There is the Gene Stealers, who are the aliens. And in, there's the, uh, oh, for goodness sake, I've completely lost the name of them. And people will be screaming at, at this thing. Ugh. Space Marines that knows the history of all these games. <laughs> the Space Marines. Um, so they really yeah. different there. They count. Yeah. So the first and the second edition of the game, they were much more compact. Um, you really didn't. Uh, yeah, the design of them is quite different. Uh, but I. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, but I absolutely love this artwork. Uh, it was painted by uh, Jerry Grace, um, or Gary Grace, I'm pretty sure that's Jerry Grace. Uh, he did the Tyranid Attack expansion, uh, and he was an artist for Games Workshop. Uh, he did a lot of art for them, including a lot of White Dwarf magazine covers. Uh, but for me, that just really evokes, the game obviously is about Basically, it's Aliens, the second Alien movie. And you can see on that, it's just that kind of cramped, close quarters. Those aliens are just absolutely throwing themselves at the Space Marines there. And they're not caring about the fact that they're getting shot at and blown to pieces and bits shredding off the back of them. And it's all really cramped and claustrophobic. And you can see the alien there creeping up behind them as well. Uh, it just, it looks superb. Uh, I really, really do like that one. Um, there's lots of, lots of great stuff going on there. Um, it's, it's just, it, it captures, it's like, it's like a still from Aliens and Aliens is, you know, is one of my favorite movies. And I wish there was uh, some better vintage Aliens board games. But I think that as far as vintage goes, um, Space Hulk probably captures that kind of uh, feel in a vintage board game uh, better than anything else. Um, so yeah. That's it. I just love that good piece of artwork. Luke? Number nine for me is... So this kind of goes against the grain of the other games that I've, I've picked, in that it really doesn't give you much in the way of telling you what the game's about, but it's undeniably a beautiful box, and it is Mysteries of Old Peking. Um, uh -huh. like this, this one doesn't tell you a great deal about the gameplay. There's actually no photograph on the front of the box of what the game looks like. You have to go to the side. But man, I, I remember seeing this on eBay like a long time ago and thinking that is really gorgeous artwork. You know, it's it's watercolor, hand painted look to it. And um, 
you know, it, it obviously it, it, it's setting a theme. You've got like, this very um, sort of like ornate dragon around the logo for the game. And again, font choice is perfect for it. But in a sense, you've got like, a, you've got a, 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 a Chinese man uh, shaking his fist at his bike being stolen. So you realize that it's going to be to do with crime. Um, it, it, I could say it's, it, it's very cartoony. It's very um, light, but it sets a the theme perfectly. And I, I, I love this. Um, I, I think it's just beautiful. Uh, it reminds me of like an illustration from a children's book. It's it's that that nice. Hell yeah! I like yeah, I like the tonality on the dragon, the kind of the greens and the blues, kind of there's no harsh clashes there. It all goes together nicely, uh, and it goes well with the dark blue and the red on the actual circle in the middle. There is, a, I mean, the way that the Gentle. dragon's being painted, there's. There's actually a suggestion of, you know, like shadow and light cast to to the scales. Uh, I mean, like I say, it's very cartoony, but someone obviously laboured over this, and it's it's gorgeous. Um, this game's been reprinted a number of times, and they have never bettered this box art. Uh, this is, for me, the definitive version of this game, the most racist version, but the definitive version. <laughs> 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 yes, it's yeah. uh, maybe a bit cult culturally insensitive by today's yeah. standards. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't stop yeah. you from being fun, though. It is a uh, those standards as well. It's pretty culturally insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's still yeah. fun to play, though. I, I, I can't. I can look past that and enjoy the game for what it is, and treat it as a product of its time as well. Moving swiftly on, yep. uh, Bernardo. We got our first Waddingtons. No, technically Dark World was Waddingtons, right? Uh, who cares? Dash and Don. Ooh. So look at this. So I'm just going to pan that drawn art, the scene. I almost wonder if they like modeled it after a photo that was taken. or It just feels, the scene feels so full. So full, and then obviously you got the the iconic in the corner of the kids playing games. Not my favorite photograph, because uh, you can't really see a whole lot of the game, and it doesn't really sell me it uh, as much as this does. Uh, from obviously the kind of bubbly uh, esque font with the lighting that kind of makes it look like that. Um, just everything about it looks full, right? She has all of the food there. You can see in the back that he's carrying all these trays. You can kind of see the glasses. Um, that are kind of in the background behind the booth there. He's falling. You can see the people that are kind of giggling over there. There's there's so much detail. The lighting on the wheels that make it look more round, the shoes, adding that almost classy kind of look to it. So good. I love the simplicity of it. I'm a huge fan of the colors. Um, yeah, that like light blue pink is always going to be one of my favorite kind of combinations uh, in design and this is like none other and and then you got you know the back but i think we're only talking about covers so. it's a very dynamic looking piece of art there's a lot of action to it and i love the airbrushed quality to it as well yeah it's good there's a lot going on in there but it's it doesn't feel cluttered exactly exactly yeah, Dash and Don Waddingtons. Nice. Okay, moving on. Um, what are we on? Number eight. Okay, this is one which I actually did a review for quite recently. Um, big one, if I can get that in frame. Jurassic Park. Oh, Dark World needs to go because it's falling over. Jurassic Park. Love it. This one was Milton Bradley release in 1993. This piece of artwork was done by James Talbot. Um, James Talbot did a lot of work for Avalon Hill, a couple of Avalon Hill board games, uh, the Tunnel and Trolls RPG uh, role play game as well. And also interestingly, 
um, something you might not be aware of, he did some of the Hero Quest uh, board artwork as well. Oh, cool. So we might come, who knows, we might come on to Hero Quest later, uh, but he obviously, Hero Quest, there was one particular artist who did the artwork for it. However, let me see if I can do this a second. Um, you know, this one here. I'm going to share this picture a second. Here we go. Um, share screen. He also was responsible for these. Same artist, Talbot. If you, oh. look, if you look at the very bottom right corner of this mm -hmm. piece of artwork, um, just by the green skeleton's foot, by the bricks, it's got his name there, Talbot. Ah. Oh, that's cool. Which is, which is really, really weird. And I think there, I can't find a signature on it, but I think the Keller's Keep expansion for Hero Quest is also the same style. I reckon Talbot also painted that one as well. But those are both based almost exactly on the other Hero Quest expansion artwork, which was not done by that artist, which is kind of weird. Um, so those ones were the um, American, the North American releases of the Hero Quest expansions, which for some reason had exactly the same artwork, pretty much, as the European releases, but were painted by a different artist. It's really weird seeing them as a side by side, why they would bother. But I mean, there's like the gargoyle's arm is in a slightly mm. different position or the banners in the background around the skeletons are missing. And think there's tiny, tiny detail changes, but otherwise they're exactly the same. I'm like, why, why did they bother doing that? It's, it's really weird, really weird. Anyway, getting back to this though, um, Jurassic Park, I loved Jurassic Park. 1993, I would have been 10 when I saw this. Yeah, those raptors are pretty scary. And this, this is just, you know, the classic scene from Jurassic Park depicted on the front of the box here with the T-Rex breaking out of its uh, pen. And it's just so atmospheric. The lighting in here, you obviously you've got your kind of orangey red in the sky here. And the lighting, the down lighting that's been painted on here is really, really good. I love it. Um, this, of course, was also in my review, I talked about that it was based on a piece of um, pre-production artwork that Crash McCreary did for Stan Winston Studios uh, during the actual production of Jurassic Park. The artists obviously used that to base uh, this T-Rex on and then expanded it with the, uh, the park cars and things. But there's just, ugh, the lighting in this is really moody and atmospheric. I think that's what I like the most about this, apart from the fact that it's got a giant great dinosaur interacting with modern day elements. I was gonna say that about the lighting because it's, it's lit completely differently from that scene in the film. You know, it's a lot of blues and obviously you got the rain there, uh, but that, seems to be leaning more into the colors of the actual Jurassic Park logo, the reds, the oranges, the yellows there. It's yeah. very thematic. It is, it's, it's really nice. It's got really strong uh, highlights on here, really dark shadows. It just, the contrast on that is great. I just really like that. Look. Number eight. Number eight is another photo um photo board but i love this for the sheer amount of effort that obviously went into making this box art and it is electronic mystery mansion like they obviously went to the effort of sourcing a location to photograph as the mansion 
And then you've got like these, you know, these actors, these uh, dressed up as the characters in the game. Um, and obviously you've got, you know, the, the millionaire who's fortune you're trying to find in the game uh, featured prominently on the box. And to me, this looks less like board game art than like a poster for a TV series from the 90s or a, 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 like a caper film. And I, I find it truly mesmerizing. It, it absolutely draws you in. You want to know what's happening behind these doors. Um, it's fantastically composed as, as, a, as a photograph. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, the effort that went to with this, I mean, this artwork on the front here doesn't reflect the art of the component pieces. So the component, the cards for like the butler and the maid, um, they're very cartoony and stylized. They're not photographs of these humans on the front here. So it, it shows a real effort when, that went into making this. And I obviously, I love this font. It's, you know, it's got this hand painted, uh, like gilded gold font to it, which is obviously got the dollar sign there. It's, it's just really well executed. Uh, I think this is spectacularly done. And oh, rear of the box, you've just got, you've just got, you've just got a photograph of the actual game being played there. And, the components but like i said that is truly really atmospheric it, it leaps off the shelf um mm -hmm. yeah love it absolutely love this thing thank you i didn't really look at the mansion as a photograph you don't think maybe it's digitally not for the age of this it, it, could, it could be a model um oh i didn't even think about that it's i suspect it probably is a, a real location that's dope. Nice, nice. I do like the color scheme on that as well, actually. Yeah, like it's like like an evening, and you know, it's it's quite moody, and but it, it's it's nicely lit as well. It, it's comforting. I don't know. It's it's, it's nice. I, I like this. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Definitely, it's got mystery about it, but not in like a creepy way or a threatening way, like Ghost Castle or something. That's exactly it. Um, it it's 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 welcoming. Like this guy, you know, he's up to something. He's not made it easy for you, but it's a game. It's going to be fun. You're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, it, there's a lot going on with this, and I, I just I, more more I look at it, the more details I, see, I tend to find with this. It's it's great. It's truly wonderful. Thank you. Nice. Number eight for you, Bernardo. So this one's a lot different than the art I would typically go for, but and I'm actually going to take the cover out because I feel like all those pieces are going to go crazy. Um, but the art in its own style, I absolutely adore. I think it's well done. That is going to be Hell's Kitchen. Uh, I'm not going to try to repronounce that again because I really don't remember it. <laughs> but it is – so bringing it closer here for you guys, it's actually like color pencil art, which oh, wow. is so trippy to think that someone drew this in that style. The lighting, like just look at all, all the detail back here. That's crazy. The stuff hanging – look at the like skull symbol smoke coming out of the – like pot so well done you can kind of see here yeah, kind of rotate myself as well it really mirrors itself well as well right like you got the person up here that's cooking the person up here that's cooking obviously different kind of scenes but they could have easily mirrored what was going on but they didn't they added so much detail and just that i i guess that's as close as i'll be able to get it to where you can see that color pencil style it's so crazy there's an awful lot going on with that. It's oh yeah, it's lovely art. It, Who's the manufacturer, by the way? Uh, it is Schmid, which is a German company because it's a German game. <laughs> but ah, and uh, the board uh, mirrors this as well. It has the same kind of texture as like that stone. Uh, I just I love that it's colored pencil, and I feel like 
I don't know how well the camera there is capturing it, but it almost looks like the styles change, at least from me looking at it. But in reality, it's just the light and darkness that they use on the colored pencils. It, it's truly phenomenal. Um, yeah, and, and it has that still fun cartoony look. Like, obviously, the bat is not so serious. Like, looks kind of like a gargoyle dragon looking thing. Yeah, Just you've fun. got the devil with the, you know, the pointy tail, and it's, it's very cartoony. Yeah, and the pieces are all over the place, so. Yeah, the back's just a photo, but. Ah, number eight. Uh, in Tufel's Kush, I think I pronounced that right. Uh, if not, German peeps, maybe you'll be able to correct me. Um, Yeah. And you've got a review of that particular game on your channel as well, don't you? Yeah, I did a hot in here remix. Yeah, it was just fire. I love it. Definitely worth awesome. checking out. It's, it's a fun one. Oh, you and your crazy song remixes. That was fun. Yeah, that was a good one. Probably my more favorite ones to do. And it was only because my girl mentioned um, how funny it would be because um, when she was looking at the fire, she was thinking of the hot in the hair song. And I was like, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> nice. Okay, moving on. Number seven um, for me, let me see, is one that Luke might have seen. Uh, Bernardo, you'll know the game, but it might not have the same artwork as this. Um, for me, number seven is... The Great Museum Caper, released by Parker Brothers in 1993. Um, this is the European edition. The American edition, which came out in 91, I think. Yes, it did. It came out in 1991, which was actually named Clue, the Great Museum Caper. Um, this one has been completely divorced from um, Clue uh, when it was released over here in Europe. It has absolutely nothing to do with Clue, Clue or Cluedo as uh, the game is known over here. Um, and so it's been completely changed kind of thematically really. Well, not really. The whole thing is exactly the same, but it's been updated. The original version of this, um, the Clue version, uh, was set kind of in a 1920s, 1930s style of museum that's being broken into in order to uh, tie it in with uh, the Clue characters. And it actually has like um, Miss Scarlet and um, Colonel Mustard on the front cover as people in the museum trying to uh, find out who has uh, stolen one of the paintings whereas this one has obviously been completely updated it's it's lost its clue link so none of these characters are from clue they all have different names um, in the instructions and it's been updated to more of a well 90s 80s well came out in the 90s so 90s style museum that's obviously been broken into um, I have no idea who painted this one. Uh, nobody really knows. The original American one, the Clue version though, interestingly enough, was actually painted um, by Tim Hildenbrandt, um, who is very well known as painting the original British release Star Wars poster for 1977. It's very iconic, um, kind of bluey, a uh, huge poster with Darth Vader's head in the background and Luke Skywalker with a lightsaber held aloft and Princess Leia holding on to his leg that's kind of been copied and memed basically in a lot of different um, things. Uh, so he painted the original one, but I, as far as I know, he did not paint this, but I really do love the style of this. The, the it's colors on this, I'm not sure if the lighting in here is picking up the colors as, as good as it could, uh, but the colors on this are really bold. Obviously being modern art uh, in the museum, it's got kind of like pop art in here. So it's got some really bold colors here. 
and it's it's pretty realistic. Again, it's got kind of this really nice lighting, but it's got an up lighting this time coming from like the uh, the broken case. You can see the up lighting on the bottom of all of their faces. There's lots of lots of details in there. We've got the the thief over here holding what he's obviously stolen out of this broken case. The expressions on their faces, the composition all looking down in there. I really like the colours on this. Um, just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of the work that I like is fantasy and monsters and that kind of thing. But as far as people go and general kind of realistic real life situations i really do like uh this but then i really like kind of heist movies and break-ins and all that kind of trying to figure things out and like oceans 11 kind of thing makes yeah. me want to get that version damn that looks great it lo actually looks older than what it actually is to me it looks like like a 70s movie poster of sorts you know uh that even even down to the font choice, it looks retro for the nineteen yeah, nineties. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the the thief kind of looks stylized like Steve McQueen to me a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's got some really nice touches in there. The yeah. expressions are that great. From the crypt vibe to it. Yeah, yeah, it does actually. You're right. So that's my number seven. Luke, what about you? Number seven. Okay, so I've 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 realised something with the rest of the games that I've picked here, in that they, in the art art itself, it shows off a lot of the gameplay and the, a lot of the components of the gameplay. Um, this one is a favourite of mine. It's one of my favourite games, and uh, the artwork is just. I've always loved this art. It's pretty mm -hmm. set spaghetti. Um, it, it's just a, a really fun artwork, really dynamic as well. Um, you can see like all the characters winding up their spaghetti as quickly as they can. You've got ingredients flying off the off the plates like it would do in the game. Uh, you've got like the tomato here and the pepper and the meatball going towards the dog. Uh, this guy's got like a spaghetti sauce on his sunglasses. Uh, it's just it it tells you everything about this game. It's going to be fun. It's going to be silly. It's going to have a lot of uh, silly action to it. And the food art for this has never ever failed to make me want to have a plate of spaghetti at bolognese. Yeah, yeah. It looks delicious. Like the spaghetti looks wet. The sauce looks rich. It, it makes me hungry looking at this thing. Um, it's it's one of my favourites, and like I said, it it shows off the gameplay, um, which is something that I quite like with with my art. Um, I like art that shows off elements of what you're going to experience playing the game. Uh, you picked up on this mark with the um, the Space Hulk game. You know, it, it, it it's artwork that teases the theme and teases the gameplay. And I think this perfectly sums up the frantic, chaotic, silly nature to this game. I mean, the game itself is just wonderful. Um, yeah, but it, it's a firm favourite of mine, this. Yeah. Nice. nice. It does have that kind of, um, do you say, cartoony, oh, what's the caricature type look to it that you might get on, you know, when you see artists down at the at the beach or along yes. the beach front which kind of ties in with i suppose the italian kind of uh, spaghetti theme and holidays i mean i just love this guy he looks so pleased with himself you know <laughs> such a good game nice. and obviously in the bottom corner you've actually got a photograph of of what the game is so i mean it's you know from the artwork to the little photograph there there's not an awful lot of misrepresentation there it's very similar you know the gingham tablecloth the plate the spoons the forks the spaghetti the ingredients it's all there uh so 
and they did a fantastic job of distilling all that into one image. You know, it's it's great art. Yeah, number seven. Okay. Bernardar. Number seven. This one, I surprisingly like it more than I know the one you guys probably see in Europe. Uh, I like it because I think the art itself is, shows more prowess. Um, but I do think the color choice on the other one might be a little better. But uh, again, the art on this, crazy Thunder Road. Now, to kind of quickly pan here for you, that like pastel kind of painted look to it is nice the details of that crash look at that i even love the kind of outline of the font like ah, oh, it's so good everything kind of screams the theme of this it doesn't feel like it's trying to take itself too seriously i think that was the biggest issue i had with the original felt like it was um oh we don't have the rights to the movie let's change the title cover as opposed to this felt like how it was designed to look, if that makes sense. And then, of course, you have the gameplay. Uh, excellent game, for sure. Um, I'm very excited for the Restoration Games reprint. Um, but, no, this is great. And something that Mark probably would have noticed is... I mean, I've, I've got my English one there. Yeah. It's very different. The text there, see? And Mark would have noticed yeah. the signature of the artist. Alexander. Yeah, um, it's great. It's great. It has been great artwork, but yours, yours conveys a really nice sense of speed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, yeah. this one you've got like a like a starburst effect going on with it, which sort of indicates uh, the, you know like rushing towards the camera. But um, I do like the American version. Um, but I see what you mean. Like this definitely looks grittier, even though that it's the same game. You know. Yeah, it's amazing. exactly same components everything uh, except the car sizes are different I found that out later it's amazing how a, a, someone's perception of a game can be informed by just the art you know like you say this looks grittier to you underneath the hood mm -hmm. agreed yeah. says how much art can do for the game <laughs> Of course, that one, uh, the Alexander name that you're showing there, um, that's actually Paul Alexander, who also did Screaming Eagle. Oh, which is, nice. which is another one which has got really nice artwork on it as well. They got You've that got at that local shop. No, they have it in my local shop. I, ne shop. I never picked it up. Still there. The colors on that are really very 80s, very Top Gun. Yeah. Nice, like it. Okay, number six, I think we're on. Right, I'm gonna move these for number six. For me, uh oh, big. Uh, it's, it's not that big. It's not not my biggest one. Uh, ooh, nearly spilled my water there. Right, number six for me. Oh, Curse okay. Curse of the Idol. Did you think that would maybe be higher? No, 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 no. Curse of the Idol, Milton Bradley game from 1990. Um, this was painted by, and I'm not going to get this surname right, David Square or Skew. David Square. Sorry, David, if you're watching. S-Q-U-E. Not quite sure how you would pronounce that. Um, if you're it's watching, like David... Thing you can uh, leave us a note as to how you pronounce it phonetically. Uh, he, he did this. He also painted the Space Crusade board artwork. Um, and he also painted the Crystal Maze artwork as well on the board game. So uh, he's, he's pretty good. Very, very detailed. I absolutely love Indiana Jones and that whole kind of adventure or kind of genre within movies and things and overcoming traps and obstacles and stealing the treasure and all kind of like sculpted idols and that kind of thing and this has got all of that in here we've got all the flames you've got your jungle background we've got obviously the uh 
the, the jewel down here that's come out of the big golden idol, which obviously is part of the actual gameplay, the sword, golden sword down here, which in the game you have to insert into one of these slots in order to get the jewel out. Interestingly, the jewel in the original pencil artwork for this is a completely different shape. Everything else pretty much looks the same, but the jewel's different. Uh, but I really like this. I mean, you can't really see it in this, but no, it won't show up. But there are actually even tiny little beads of sweat coming down this guy's brow, um, down his temple, from fear and heat from the fire. There's just so much detail in that. And we've got, again, really strong shadows uh, and the shadow coming from the flames. So he's had to think quite a bit about where those shadows would be and things. But it just ca really captures that kind of like 1930s serial uh, movie or serial uh, TV series that Indiana Jones obviously was uh, supposed to capture. I know the game itself is maybe not the best. I know you've reviewed this as well, um, Luke, and you're not particularly keen on this, or it has faults. It does have faults. I love the game. I do love the game. Um, I will hold my hands up and say it's flawed. It, you need house rules in order to make the game work. But uh, I, I, I love this game. Absolutely love it. Great. This, this is one that I had as a kid, actually. Um, again, I probably didn't actually play. Well, I, I do remember playing it properly by the rules, but I probably played more with it, just setting it up as a temple and playing with the figures and the idol and the bad guy and things. So I really like oh, that. It's quite fault you for doing that. I mean, set up, it's a fantastic play set. You know, like you've got the little walls and all the traps and everything. I, I can the imagine moving cogs. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Like it. What are we on? Uh, number six. Look. Number six. Uh, there's, again, number of variants to this game. Um, and this is the one which I know most people want to hunt for because of the miniatures. Um, and again, I've picked it for the reasons that it shows off a lot of the gameplay, and that is Escape from Atlantis. The um, Waddington's, I think this is the 95 version? 96, I think. 96. I think it's um, 86 and 96, only because I did the comparison video. I, I, the, There's a lot of dynamic action going on with this, and I love it. So, um, obviously, you've got the this this temple the uh, the temple of Atlantis um, and it's it's sort of uh, shrouded in light but that's because it's being enveloped by these waves you can see this swimmers here um, like swimming for their lives you've got sharks chasing after them which is a big part of the gameplay you've got this swimmer who's holding on to a friendly dolphin which again a massive part of the gameplay. You've got this huge boat here with survivors uh, and they're being attacked by a giant squid and you've got the kraken chasing them behind. Um, again, it, it shows massive elements of the gameplay in a single illustration and I love it. I mean, uh, the the expressions of, of the characters uh, and the, the action conveyed here, you know, you've got this woman here who's like, mid scream um you've got a woman here who looks like she's going to be sick over the side of the boat um and then you've got these guys here trying to help this poor woman who's tangled up in this octopus's tentacles um th there's a real little story being told here it's it's brilliant um yeah um and you know the tatty sail uh, you know it sort of indicates just how frantic this game's going to be uh, it's a fantastic game and it's a really fantastic piece of art yeah it is yeah. that's the one i want eventually i'll grab one it's worth picking up mm -hmm. very good game i i do think that it's probably one of waddington's best definitely yeah um 
The only thing thing is with this particular version, I don't know if it's the same with yours, Mark. Um, the figures do not want to stay stood up right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know why they added that little notch into the, the base. It yeah, does it's, it's, favours. Yeah, it's weird. It doesn't seem to do anything. There's no reason for it. But uh, yeah, they're quite unstable. If if the little holes that they're slotted into have, you know, like a little plug, then that would make total sense, but they don't. So it's kind of puzzling as to why they did that. Yeah. But other than that, this is a superb game. Definitely worth picking Learn up. how to rebase things. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what about you then, Bernardo? What is your number six? This is um, kind of a board game. It's a board game. It's just more of a cutesy game. I say cutesy because I really don't know how to describe it. They marketed it towards females. However, it is a ton of fun. And to be fair, they also did the same with Mall Madness, and that game's awesome. That is Ask Xander. Now, to appreciate, I will get closer. Holy crap. They painted that. The wizard with the glow. I want, like, maybe I'm standing up and I'm casting a shadow. I think that's the case. Look at the detail on that. They did not have to do that. They drew everything. And then the font is phenomenal. It's like an Aladdin. Look at him. He's awesome. This game's hilarious. Uh, and they even did the full board. They didn't have to do that. Right? Just to, like, compare. That could have been so easily have just been a photograph, that front yeah. cover. Yeah. Yeah. This is like that Harry Potter cover movie poster. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And the game it is very silly. Oh. <laughs> not, not top tier gameplay, but it is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be Ask Xander. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything more to say about that one. Uh, I'm not much of a history major. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe done a little bit of research. <laughs> I ain't nothing wrong with that. You got me there. Okay, moving on to number five then. Um, this is one that I do not own. Um, I'm going to probably mess up all of the pronunciation here. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of it, first of all. Um, here we go. That's not the biggest picture, but this is what I'm, where is my screen share? Here is what I'm going for. This one is, for me, number five, Alerta Roja, or Alerta Roja, perhaps, uh, produced by CIFA or CEFA in 1986. Uh, this is a Spanish game. Um, CIFA, I'm going to pronounce it that way, it might be wrong, uh, but they produced a whole load of games which only came out European, uh, probably only in Spain, actually. Um, I know very little about this game, um, it was, this cover was painted by an artist, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm going to uh, massacre this name, Isidre Mones, perhaps, that's how you say it. Um, he painted a lot of games for Sifa. He doesn't seem to have painted anything else outside of that, though. Um, but the artwork that he's done is amazing for the different games. I mean, basically, as far as I can tell with this game, it seems to be like Scotland Yard. But instead of chasing around criminals, you're chasing around a um, barrel of plutonium um, and trying to hunt down where it is. A lot of secret movement in the game. But I mean, <sighs> I just I love I love the look of this thing. I mean, the game itself might be 
great, might be rubbish. I don't know. But the box art is amazing. It just it looks like it is. Um, it, it looks like it's the video cover from a game from uh, an eighties VHS. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I Has that Fright Night vibe to it? Fright Night. Yeah. Big box X rental. <laughs> <And> <laughs> it, it's that kind of thing. It's that kind of. It's just got that eighties vibe. Um, I mean, the game itself um, actually has a tiny little miniature see-through plastic barrel, which has a gold chrome skull inside it. Um, so. Cool. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a nice little component, but it's got that kind of classic eighties horror movie thing, the kind of thing that you'd go into the video shop, being completely underage, not able to watch any of the films, and go, I want to watch that. That's what I want to watch, and just picking it up and just staring at the video box cover for ages until your parents drag you away from that section. That for me is, I just love it. It's, it's that eighties nostalgia right there. They do a lot of good covers as well. Oh, I actually, um, I was after a few games from them, uh, from the past and, uh, recently kind of came in contact with a few of them, funny enough, but great artwork. Yeah. That's my number five. Look. Number five. Okay. Number five I, is. 13 dead end drive Ooh, that was a good one and again I, I've it's first off it is beautifully illustrated it's it, it looks to me like an oil painting um very ca you know caricature very silly you know you've got these uh, characters which are all in the game um you know you've got like the the, the rich boyfriend the, rich the, boyfriend, the, the chef um the tennis coach um and they're they're all featured in the game and again the illustration shows off all the traps in the game you've got the chandelier falling the bookcase ladder falling um falling down the stairs the statue being pushed over with the axe in his hand and of course being shoved in the fireplace um and obviously the the bags and bags of money the reason why everyone's there and why everyone's killing each other um it's it's fantastic um again the colors are beautiful like this this warm orange mixed with the purple you know it's going to be sinister in a way but light-hearted you know it's obviously it's a game about murder um but it, it's happy you know it's jovial um and yeah um they've recently brought this game out uh, with a new print of it haven't changed a thing the box art is exactly the same, and that says everything, really. They didn't need to change it. It's it's perfect as it is. Um, yeah. I, well, the I, clips could have used work. Pardon? <laughs> I said the clips could have used work. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, set up for this game is like a 15-minute operation, but it's yeah. worth it. Yeah. Unlike Mousetrap, it's worth it. Well, yeah, the traps are all working when you start the game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And they work every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they do. Uh, but, Doug, I'm doing a review for a game at the moment, which has got an action contraption in it. Oh, my goodness. Trying to get that thing to work is horrendous. It, can't, it cannot be any worse than Splish Splash, because I ruined our dining room table making that video. He might What's have it? beat a silly safari was awful. That was <laughs> not fun. That was not designed as intended. I, I faked the mess out of it in that video. That game predates uh, Mousetrap, doesn't it, I think? I actually don't think so. I want to say they came out around the same time, though. I mean, I watched the review on that, and I was like, I like the components of this. And then you said they don't work. Nope. Plays like junk, you know. <laughs> yeah, I baked it. I was just, I did cutscenes. Oop, this falls. Oop, this traps. Oop. <laughs> yeah. What that does work really well in terms of like a trap, and it works more or less every time, is uh, 
Rumble in the Jungle. I mean, that is a really complicated trap. But again, it's one of those ones which is built up before the game starts. And it's not like it's not like Ghost Castle where the the skull might go down one shoot and activate. No, all the traps get activated at the same time. If you're on a spot, you're going to get hit. You know, it's it's just tough luck. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, 13 Dead End Drive, one of my favorite games uh, and one of my favorite pieces of art as well. Um yeah, it's up there. It's a truly fantastic game. Yeah, I do love that artwork myself. Bernardo, what about you? Ooh, we got a really ancient one here. Um, arguably one of my favorites, if not my favorite uh, record player board game, that is going to be uh, Voice of the Mummy. I love this game. I can't rave about this one enough. But the art on that is crazy. It is painted. This is from the 70s, for Christ's sake. Um, 1971, to be exact, because I'm looking from the inside of the box because I'm a cheater. Um, look at, like, the fact that they painted it to look realistic, those gems. Like, I look like I can just knock them off of the board. Like, if I left it like this, or obviously if I did it sideways, it would look better. But with the lighting, I can't. It looks like you can just pick those right out. The detail is, is just phenomenal. I I really don't know a whole lot about who designed it, um, but it just captures everything on the game. It's one of the few designs where the full design is done as artwork for everything in the game. Like, nothing is original to itself other than, obviously, the text streaming from it. But they could have easily done a photograph, especially back then. Uh, this already had a record player, so I could imagine budget for this was already pretty crazy. Um, but now let's get a guy to just come out and paint it. Might as well go full effect on it. And I'm glad they did because this game is not only awesome, but the art design is crazy. I love kind of the evilish kind of shadows back there. There's not a whole lot of call to attention, but it's it's almost like haunting, um, like a safari almost. But you're too afraid to look back because the voice is calling you. Ooh. Yeah, huge fan. Love this game. But there's a few it, games like that where they you know where they they paint the components from the game and it it could have been done with a photograph and it always surprises me that they go to the effort of getting someone to paint you know a representation yeah it's, it's obviously it's interesting it's, to do yeah it's also the artwork is very it's it's seventies. Is it seventies or sixties? That one. Oh, 1971. Yeah. It it has that kind of look. I don't know if it's a kind of gritty quality to it or something. But oh yeah, that thing is the the cardboard is, is gritty. It's mm -hmm. old. <laughs> but but the seventies games, the artwork on them, they have a particular style to them that we just don't have these days, or in the 80s, or in the 90s. Uh, it's, there's, there's something about it I can't quite put my finger on, but it's... You I can know what you mean. It's like, like thummy and scratchy. You can, you, can, you can kind of see, like, the brush strokes and, like, the artist's movements in the art. Uh, I'm thinking of, a, you know, a Bermuda Triangle. You know, like, with the sweeps of the, the sea there, you can actually see the brush strokes on the art art it's it's really nicely done that's i think 74 that game uh so it's of that time yeah this yeah. they um they didn't they took all the stops on that like up to the board being styrofoam which is ridiculous and they even capture it in the artwork the like styrofoam look to it so nice such a great game uh voice of the mummy nice okay Moving on to number four. It's starting to get really tricky now. Uh, number four for me. Hero Quest. I'm, I'm going number four with this one. That's ugly. It's like, but, no, it looks oh, good. Wash your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. So nice. Uh, Milton Bradley, 1989. Uh, Les Edwards. Uh, obviously painted this, and he did all of the uh, all of the expansions, all of the EU expansion artwork as well. Obviously, I showed you the 
the American expansion artwork there, which was based on his, but done by a different artist, which is weird. But oh, there's so, so much has already been said about the Hero Quest um, artwork. It is just so iconic. Um, it's obviously when he was um, commissioned to paint this piece of artwork, he, one of the one of the things he was told was to get as many of the game pieces in the artwork as possible. So we've got the barbarian and the dwarf uh, and the elf and the wizard. And then we've also got the zombies and we've got our uh, chaos sorcerer and we've got our chaos warriors and we've got mummies and skeletons and orcs. Um, this... His hair's in motion. That for me was the most impressive part of that cover. Yeah. They did not have to do that, and that they knew that would have been twice as hard to do to capture. Yeah. It's it's just one of the most iconic pieces of fantasy art there is out there. Um, I have to say, this dueling energy from the hands that doesn't sit right with me for some reason. It's odd. I mean he kind of looks like he would be casting over here somewhere rather than straight up here. I don't know. Uh, he, that, casted that's... The, he casted the name of the game. He's super powerful for that. <laughs> it's just, yeah. That, that's the only bit that, that <laughs> bugs me slightly, but uh, the rest of it is so nice. It's so detailed. It's so realistic. You know, obviously zombies and orcs as realistic as they can be since they're not real but um not with that attitude <laughs> it's just it's just oh i'm, I'm not going to keep going on about that because lots have been said about hero quest already but beautiful piece of artwork definitely agreed luke what do you think number four Number four, I know this is one that you like, Mark, so number four for me, it's got to be Forbidden Bridge. Yes. If this is, this is just beautiful. Um, I don't, I don't know who the artist is for this, but they were definitely going for the Drew shoes and look. The, the sort of Indiana Jones, um, Star Wars movie poster, that sort of... Do you know who who painted it? No, I don't. It was Drew Struzan. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Damn. Well, I called that one. Yeah, <laughs> you're totally. Telling, you're telling me you don't like this one? Look at it. No. I, You know, I, I don't hate it, but I, I do like the original one better. Uh, I think it's just they, they, more they, sense of motion with this. Um, there really is like I've noticed with like Drew shoes and posters, like there's a real sense of capturing that split second in time um, of this th what's happening in the game. You know, you've and again, it's showing you everything that's ha happens in the game. You've got a tiny little raft down here in the river, which. You know, it's it's showing, yes, you travel up the river in the game to get to the idol. You cross the bridge, you might fall off. The most annoying thing about this box for me is this big banner here. I don't want that there because you can just about see an arm and a leg of a guy falling to his death. And I want that on my box. Why did they cover that up? Um, but... The perspective, the colours, um, just the style of this is it is perfect. And, and again, absolutely perfect font choice for it. I love the colours. I love the juxtaposition of the, the purple against the green of the jungle behind, the glowing eyes. Uh, this jewel looks spectacular in the top of his head. Um, they do not make them like this anymore. Imagine getting Drew shoes in to make a box art for a board game now. It just wouldn't happen. Truly a one-off and an absolutely amazing piece of art. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Barnardo. I got one I'm sure you'll thought would be number one. Uh, and I guess the world has not seen that I obtained this version of the game. The English version of Horror House. Ah, people know I had the Japanese one. But I did pick up the English because I found I wanted this one more. Um, There is a lot of differences, though. And that is a video that is basically done. I do have to upload that. Sorry, guys. Um, But Horror House art is phenomenal. I love horror. That is my favorite genre. And the Japanese horror um, uh, mythos is probably some of the best up there with uh, Korean horror. If you guys are really familiar into uh, the horror genres uh, from different um, cultures, this is excellent. You have, I don't even want to go through and name some of these, especially because you guys would know them. But you got the homie Dracula back here. You have the Death Head, which again... It's a record player game. They did not have to do that. They could easily put a photograph um, and even just like images from the cards. But they actually redrew everything that isn't on the cards on this specific box, which is excellent. Um, I love the art choice. Uh, This really does pop. Um, It's so hard displaying games like this when you wish you could display games like this effectively just because... They speak for themselves. It's an easy sell to play a game that looks this pretty, especially the board, because same kind of art style as well. Um, I have both this and the Action GT. I will say this one for me visually is far more superior um, just because there was just a lot more attention to detail and work put on this. Um, And obviously with Action GT, they, they follow their brand. So there's a reason why it looks the way it does. But Horror House, that's the Bandai version. God dang, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I absolutely loved Monsters when I was a kid. And I had like various different reference books about different monsters and mythological creatures from around the world and things. And there's some pretty obscure ones on the front cover of that box there. Like the Kappa, you can see the top of his head uh, exposed with like a little pool of water in it into the kappa obviously being i'm pretty sure a japanese mythological creature you'd bow to it and the water it would bow back and the water would fall out and it would die or something horrible to it um doing that so there's some really good stuff on there the mon- monsters are just great what, what little boy doesn't like monsters all of them <laughs> okay number three let's get it moving number three omega virus for me could be i'm going with number three on this one not that impressed it's it's <laughs> so pretty it's so pretty i do like omega virus uh milton bradley game from 1992 uh, this piece of artwork was painted by Rick Grayson, um, who has a huge, huge portfolio of work. Uh, he, he's worked right up into the 2000s on board game artwork. He may even still be producing board game artwork today. Uh, he does a lot of, you know, computer uh, graphic type work. Um Using Yo, what if the reprint restoration got that artist back? That would be crazy. Oh, All right. He's done That's so much brilliant stuff. He did the Goosebumps Terror in the Graveyard um, board game. Um, and surprisingly, he actually also did a Hero Quest expansion. He was uh, responsible for painting the Hero Quest, the Barbarian Quest, uh, the one that um, has just. Rose of horror. What's that? Frozen Horror. Yes, Frozen Horror. The one that's just been uh, reissued. I need uh, to get. Yeah, he he did the artwork. The guy who did this did the artwork for that original expansion. Um, it's it's just so thematic. We're talking about you know um, VHS artwork from the eighties. Well, that's kind of like the horror artwork. This is the eighties sci-fi artwork that you would get on those kind of uh, VHS. 
the big looming kind of virus head here. Um, it's it's just so nice that you know you've got your battle sat one where obviously the whole game is uh, set. The virus is trying to take it over that you're fighting against. You've got all your um, commandos that are trying to take down the virus. You've got your big timer here showing you that time's running out. The colors on this, the lighting coming up from the screens, the lighting coming from the electricity there and the lasers and from up the tunnels. There's just so much going on in this. It's just so nostalgic, so... It's it's very very eighties, um, not not that it is an eighties game. Obviously, it's nineties, but it just captures all of that, and it's so good. It's so good. There's so much detail packed into that, and the blue color scheme, the kind of space like age. It's it's really nice. Like that one a lot. Agreed. It's it's a stunning piece of art. Yeah, yeah, probably. Luke, what about you? Number three is a game that you've already covered. It's the Curse of the Idol. It's uh, again, it's it's no photograph of the game on the actual front cover, but it tells you everything you need to know about this game. It's going to be action packed. It's going to be fun. Um, you, it's going to put you you in, as a player in danger. Um, it's phenomenal. It, it really is, and so thematic. Um, you know, you've got. Uh, it, it shows off an awful lot, awful lot of the components as well. So you know, the, you've got the temple here, the huge idol, the sword that you use to free the the gemstone out of um, of, of the idol. It's it's incredible artwork. Um, the lighting on it is really well captured. Um, I just love this thing. Um, it, it's got that sort of, you know, like uh, adventure serial book from the library feel to it. Um, font cho choice, again, is, is just perfect for it. Um, I'd have that on a T-shirt. It's, it's, it, it's, it's really, really lovely. I love as well how perspective wise you really get a feel like the idol is glowering down on your your play piece here you know the the, the adventurer um you know it, it creates this sense of tension and fear with it and again like components wise they they pretty much captured how how that idol looks on the board like shape wise expression everything they nailed it same with the the little golden sword um perfectly captured um it's it's really fantastic stuff um the only thing better than the front cover art is the actual art to the game itself the the components for this are among the very very best painted vintage artwork on a game that i have ever seen like the level of detail to the actual game components is just out of this world. Like they they have different illustrations to the walls on the outside as what they do in the inside. So like the outside of the temperature is lit by daylight and is painted to be that way. And on the inside, it's all lit by torches and it's darker with these lights picked out around the temple. It stunning, stunning looking game. It I looks still, amazing. <laughs> I still think that guy that commented on my video that said he's the one sitting next to the girl on the photo. That's so awesome. <laughs> Imagine being able to just say that. <laughs> so crazy. But uh, yeah, I, like, I, I love the art. I do love the game, but it is flawed as hell. Um, one of those ones where you definitely need house rules to make it work. Yeah. Agreed. Very nice looking on, definitely. Bernardo, what about you? So this is a game I, I haven't really talked about collecting some of these. A Japanese board game. 
Uh, it is a game I'm still in works of having translated. I'm actually sending it over to a professional because there's a lot of broken translations with Google with this specific game. Um, it is the um, vampire, um, the vampire game or a vampire house game. There's a few different translations, but holy crap, the how clean of a design this is is just off the charts. Like the shadowing, just ah, I love Dracula as a theme and obviously as a monster and. This cover is just has so much simplicity to it. It is it is close to perfect for me. It's what drew me to the game. Uh, that and uh, kind of the initial designs, uh, the game design, right? Everything with it is um, is kind of drawn art. But this is more of that painted style that uh, seems to be a trend with what we like there. You can even kind of see his hand crawling out of the thing. Ugh. Like the stones. And he's the such a realistic looking vampire as well. I mean, uh, most board games go for a kind of stylized, slightly cartoony look, but they've gone for hyper realism there. Yeah, it's great. I love the airbrush look to that. It's like what you'd see on the side of like a like a haunted house at a fairground. It's it's that level of detail. Yeah, it's it's great. And the game's awesome, by the way. Uh, from what I have already translated, there's just a few things I can't figure out. Yeah, like that one. Yeah, definitely something about Dracula games. I, I would agree. I do like them as well. Okay, we're down to number two. I think this is going to start getting a lot of overlap, I think. Um, let me see. Number two for me, I'm going to share this one. There we go. Number two, Forbidden Bridge. Look, you talked about it, Milton Bradley, 1992. This version here, well, here you go. Here's one that doesn't have that giant picture, a giant sticker thing plastered over the corner so you can actually see the man falling off of the bridge. <laughs> and yeah, as we said, it was painting, painted by Drew Struzan. And um, he's very, very famous for doing um, movie poster artwork. He did the Star Wars special edition release uh, posters. He did episode one, two, and three of Star Wars, the posters for them. Hellboy, Hook. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Indiana Goonies, Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah, he did. Oh, God. Yeah. And again, it's the whole Indiana Jones thing. Absolutely love it. The, you know, the look of fear on his face as he's running away. Uh, he knows that he needs to get out of there before that bridge starts shaking and he's going to fall off as, as his uh, fellow adventurers are doing falling to their doom. And it's, it's so realistic. I mean, Drew Struzan's style, it's kind of, scratchy, pencil-y, a lot of not quite brush strokes, but a lot of strokes in there that you can see. And again, it's just that kind of 30s serial type style. And I just love that kind of jungle adventure. You're right, the idol itself looks really, really evil. And let's face it, it looks a lot more... Um, scary than uh, the actual one in the game does uh, and particularly the uh, the updated version the new uh, the new forbidden bridge one that was released it looks a lot more uh, that looks pretty goofy compared to the old one I think but uh, the details in there uh, the look of that idol I absolutely uh, love it as you say the glowing eyes the peril the danger it, it sucks you in you want you you want to be an adventurer trying to get um that jewels trying to overcome the obstacles um and you know escape the danger with with fortune and glory that's what it's all about and i didn't know you didn't have that one no unfortunately not it's um Am I right in thinking, Luke, did it 
come out over here in the UK? I had to get mine shipped over. Yeah, I found I it a mm. stupid price when I was like, well, I'm not leaving that. And this was way before, I think I got it before Brexit, so shipping charges weren't astronomical, so I thought, I'm having that. Yeah, I think yeah. all told, I think it cost me £40 to get it over. That's buying the game and the shipping. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I would love, love a copy of that, but as yeah, I don't think it was released here in the UK, so it's pretty hard to get over here. Shipping's obviously high, and it, it I does... don't think the reprints over here is it. No, no, it hasn't been released over here because it was a it's Target the... exclusive, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, like a lot of the Ravensburger um, Target exclusives, I imagine we will get it a couple of months couple down months the line, down. but it's not here yet. There. Uh, number two, look. Again, we're starting to cross over here. Um, it's got to be Hero Quest. I mean, it, like you said, a lot's been said on this artwork before, but again, it, it, it's, it, it is so iconic. Um, even just the font alone. Like, I've seen like deluxe versions of Hero Quest where all I've done is black box that font and it, it sells it. Like, uh, it's, it, it's, it's such an iconic piece of artwork. And as you said, Mark, it, to me, it, it's like a snapshot in time. You've, you've, you've walked in on these heroes battling these monsters, and it's like they've turned around and just spotted you out the corner of their, their eye. You know, like, oh, shit, what are you doing here? You know? <laughs> um, but it, it captures a lot of the gameplay elements. You've got magic. You've got uh, battling. You've, you've got the full assortment of monsters there. You know, you've got the orcs, skeletons, mummies, um, uh, the goblins. I think like I think yeah, the Samir is like the only one that's missing from the box cover. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this is supposed to be. It looks kind of like a werewolf. It could be the gargoyle. Uh, just sort of like in between the mummy and the skele skeleton here, but uh, there's, there's so much action captured in in this one picture. Like the dwarf, like mid swing with the axe, you know, it's just going to absolutely sink that thing into this arc here. Uh, it, it's you know, it, it sets the scene perfectly. It's obviously aimed at older, like older children. You know, the whole thing shrouded in black, illuminated by torchlight. You're going to be scuttling around dungeons, facing monsters. It sets the scene perfectly. I, it's no wonder that this game sold as well as it did back in the 80s. And it's no wonder that there's such a devoted following for the game uh, still, uh, to the point that they've actually brought this thing back. It's, it's iconic. Um, not only have they brought this thing back, they're bringing all of it back as well, aren't they? I know, and part of me wishes I got on the train with the remake so I could get and play the expansions, but I'm not going to own two copies of a game. I mean, it's the same gameplay and the same, uh, same quests. I ain't paying to have the same game as I've got here. I wanted the vintage oh, version, yeah. and I got the vintage <laughs> version. If, if you know, if I strike it lucky and win the lottery, then maybe I will feel more comfortable chilling about a grand out for Mage in the Mirror. Uh, the first thing you buy, you win wins lottery, buys a reprint of Hero Quest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go, I'll go straight for the vin vintage ones, and uh, I'll get a perfectly unpunched one and just annoy people by, you know... <laughs> punch them all, buy them all, yeah. just punch them. I'm going to live stream yeah. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's another one, mint grade 10. Let's crack this open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two uh, is another crossover. It wasn't worthy of being one, but I feel like it might be someone else's list here. Da -da -da -da. Omega virus. 
Now, I will talk about a couple of things because obviously we, we've taken a look at kind of the cover here. It is well painted. But for me, I absolutely love the freaking void. Look at that. It fading to nothingness. And the detail on how far it fades back is actually just crazy. Like, I yeah, I can't get over that enough. It is so well done. The blending, the shadows, it makes me wonder if it was done digitally um, or this person was that skilled. I really could not imagine them being skilled enough to draw that by hand with the kind of fading there. But if they are, kudos to you. You're a freaking legend. The font is great. The Omega font symbol what this is like a fraternity game there's a reason why people are following it it's great the box art everything about it is excellent if i could put rule book art i'd probably throw this on there too i'm just gonna throw that in there as a bonus for everyone one it's, of the best rule books there are there is around a whole comic and it's design wise yes but it wasn't the easiest to follow off the jump. Like, there's just a lot to know to be yeah. But great game. But yeah. Number two. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. We're down to number one. Right. Number one. A game which, sadly, I do not own. But here is my choice for number one. Coming up. It is the one I think it is. Is it? Oh, no. No, it's not. You want, I you have, have the reprint? Choice. You have the reprint? I have got the Restoration Games uh, yeah. version of Fireball Island. Yeah, I've got the new one. Um, but the artwork on the old one, this, this for me, I, yeah. It's great. It is great. Yeah. And that, I, you know, I talked a lot of crap about the old one, which, I mean, I still will design-wise, but I do want to own it for the collection aspect of things. It's awesome. Yeah. I think I, I do like the new one. The new one is great, but I don't think the artwork on the new one is as good as this original uh, artwork. This was... Maybe the make... box. But you've yeah. seen the cards, though? I was pretty disappointed at all the other stuff. Yeah. I love um, the that art, the old one, like the the impacts of fireballs far, you know, into the ocean, far yeah. up in the distance. It, it gives a real sense of scale to the island. Agreed. It's spectacular. Yeah. It, it's just superb. 1988, uh, 1986, Milton Bradley. And uh, this one was actually painted by Paul Alexander, who... Painted Thunder Road and Screaming Eagles. <laughs> Same artist. Um, I love the color choices on this. The the kind the blue, uh, the blues of the mountain contrasting with the uh, the yellows and the oranges and the reds of the fireballs, just goes really nicely. And you got the lush kind of well. The lush greens, but they're also kind of muted, and you've got all the shadow right at the foreground um, of uh, the artwork. This the composition. Yeah, the fire on it's drawn perfectly, honestly. Yeah, it is. It's so, so nice. The blending on it, all of it, really good. And of course, obviously, it shows a lot of the game components, obviously. Fireball Island, the whole point is that Volcar spits out fireballs, and you can see that perfectly on the picture of the island here. It's a bit odd, the giant crystal just kind of shoved in the side of the rock. That's slightly... Was it? It looks like it's floating there. I didn't really get the impression that it's hinged. It, it, look, it looks to me like it's kind of like being pushed into the side of the rock that's growing out yeah, the side of the rock yeah, yeah. That's I, love the, I love all the action going on with the actual characters you know like the guy running across the bridge um well there's two guys there's one further in the distance you know the guy on the little ladder uh yeah. people scrambling out of the water it's there's so much going on with his heart you, you know you can 
you can spend a good while just finding new details with it. It is, it is wonderful. Yeah, really nice. Of course, the bridges obviously are part of the gameplay mechanic as well, with the fireballs being able to topple the bridges. Um, so, yeah. You know what's the fun, fun thing about that? I don't know, and I, I'm pretty confident the answer is no. Uh, I don't think the name of the um, idol was um, Volcar. I don't think that was his name. I don't think they ever named it. I think Restoration Games named him that. I don't, I don't know that for a hundred percent sure, but well, we'll find out. Idol is by buying an old copy. True, true, <laughs> and that will happen probably sooner than later. Now, thanks to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that that is like top top three vintage board games that I want to own. That's one of them, despite it being not as good as the new remake and not necessarily being a particularly great game it's still up there one of the top most wanted and i mean without the old the new wouldn't exist so i'll always give it some kind of love but not all i can get that understand like sort of like paying your respects to like you know, like you, you, you own the uh, original Dark Tower as well, don't you? As well as Return to Dark Tower, and I know which one of those you'd play more. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it's knowing where it came from. For sure, for sure. Having the new Dark Tower, do you think you'd ever get rid of the old one? Is it is it superfluous? Do you not need it anymore? No, I think um, there's reasons why I like it. I'm actually going to do a big comparison um, with with the two in terms of the experience it provides. I did a lot of digging to really, really try hard on this one. Um, some thoughts have changed on the Vintage one for sure. I think it has its place in my collection. Um, do I think you need to go back and play it? I don't think so. But I think I have enough friends who like playing the vintage games where it will get played. But I, I don't see it ever hitting the table a fraction of as much as Return will. Do you think you'll ever play Return with the vintage sounds for those friends? Because I, I just can't see it myself. It's nice they included it, but I just don't think I'll ever play Return to Dark Tower with the vintage sounds. Yeah, it just it feels silly. It's like I got eight bit sounds for a for a real world tower. <laughs> like that ain't an eight bit tower. <laughs> I think crazy. Yeah, no, nah, I don't see it. I like that they put it in there. I mean, for the fans, but I feel like even people that were real fans, they're not even gonna do it. I, I can't imagine it. No. To me, it would break the immersion. Like you've got the the, the music playing. And you've got like the, the monsters howling and right in the middle of playing you, with the you, music. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it would just rip me out of that immersion. Thank you. Yeah. I guess okay. you gotta show us your number one board game. Number board. one, look. Number one. Bernardo, you predicted it. It was hard not to have it as number one for me. It had to be. It's a mega virus. Uh, this this box art is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, mine's a little bit more scratched and battered than yours, but my good god, the amount of detail captured in this. And again, it's it's detail, you know, that is part of the gameplay. You know, moving to airlocks and coming out. Uh, it's a race against time. You're collecting weapons to shoot at the the virus. It, I love the styling of this. It, it's like the glows of all the the buttons and uh, you know the readouts and everything. It's so um, vintage sci-fi. I'm I'm thinking stuff like um, Silent Runnings and and films like that. Inner Space, um, it, it, but it, it captures the feel of of the gameplay perfectly. Um, the virus, it, it, it's almost like the composition of the Star Wars posters with the giant Darth Vader head. But it, it, again, details there that probably you're not going to pick up on camera, but 
there's all this like circuit board artwork to the head here of the virus. Um, it, it's all spectacular. And Bernardo, this this is pre like digital art. This is all hand painted. It, so it, they did the opacity by hand. Yes. Yeah. Damn. It, it is a stunning piece of art. This is just so many little pieces and details and the other beautiful thing as well is is there's a box insert done i think by the same artist and it's outlining the the you know the figures the characters and the weapons and again the same amount of effort has been put into those two i if i'm if i'm wanting to impress someone if i'm wanting to get people to understand why i love vintage games as much as i do it's always this game because you land this on a table and immediately it's impressive and then you start setting the thing up and playing it and it blows people's mind that this is what a vintage game could be you know um i I am excited and nervous as hell as to what restoration are going to do to this game because this is one of my all-time favorites me too It, it it's such a hard game to follow up but it's not hard to add to it which no, is exciting. That's the exciting part. It's like I don't, I'm not losing faith by any means. I mean, they killed it with Dark Tower. They killed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. But you're right. It's scary. I, I mean, I appreciate this game particularly because, um, I mean that that virus unit is so clever. It, it like for a for a battery operated push button thing in the middle of the board. It's very clever and it learns what you're doing i really don't want an app for the remake I'll, it works for dark tower i don't want an app i want buttons to press i want that thing on the board to be the villain yeah it it would it would really depend what they do with that tower for me to accept an app mm. but I, the more I've been thinking about it, the more I wouldn't be as opposed to it if they make it make sense. Like, yeah. I need, like, yeah, so much. I could, We could talk about that game all day. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what they do, particularly with te- today's technology and the advances. If you think about th- that, would it be, the, you know, <laughs> Pretty, pretty spectacular when it came out. Uh, I mean, even by today's standards, as far as board games go, that electronic unit is pretty spectacular for a board game, even oh, yeah. by today's standards. So, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what Restoration does as well, actually. Yeah, and to be fair as well, it's not hard to self-contain it. You know, they've even proven that with the Mall Madness reprint, they can put that brain inside of something twice as small. That's crazy. Like, if the normal size, they could probably do something crazy. I don't know. But that's speculation. My number one was the one I thought you were going to put on when you mentioned that you didn't have it. And it's not my favorite game. I've warmed up to it more over time. But the artwork is by far the craziest artwork I've ever seen um, from, like, a hand-painted standpoint. It's your boy. Look at this. First off, the green slime and swamp is absolute perfection. The color design is ridiculous. Uh, The one thing I can say about this game, regardless of some of the minor annoyances I have with the game, um, again, warmed up to it over time uh, is the fact that I could put this on the table and I don't have to say anything for anyone to ask me what it is and be interested. It not only is the most ridiculous box size, very inconvenient by the way, um, which hey, if restoration ever wants to do this one by hell means, I would love to see it. Um, the, oh my gosh, just the eyes, the, uh, I don't even know how to like show off this box to do it justice. It is just, Perfect. A font. Ah. No. Just. I don't. Yeah, I don't have words. The trailing. Like, look at the. Look at the overall focus here, right? The swamp has like that. 
almost gunk mist over top or reflection, you could say, from its mouth up to the Indiana Jones-esque character. And ah, it's just great. It is truly... It's combining that kind of Indiana Jones adventurer feel with, like, monsters and mythology. Yeah, and one of the few games... Um, it, it surprised me too when I started to notice it. One of the few games that has a set built for it that's also in the photo in the game, right? I've seen commercials where they build sets, like Dark Tower. They built a set, but they didn't have that in the photos. Do stuff like that. What happened? I love when they do stuff like that. Build miniature it's sets insane. for selling the theme. But like. A lot of them already do that for the commercial. Why couldn't they just do that? I guess you. Ha- I guess the caveat you have to have uh, a pre-production copy for the commercial. So chances are, um, it's already done. But damn, this is good. I I can't say enough good things about it. This is actually not my good copy of the box. I just didn't feel like grabbing it because it's all the way in the back there. Um, but this um. This does have the full art. And uh, not only finding the game um, was tricky, but my desire to have a good-looking box was also very hard. Almost got one sealed, man. That would have been dope. Now, Bernardo, you said that you've warmed up to the game. Yeah. And now, are you saying you've warmed up, or has your hearing just got worse? <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually, I've even tested removing the sound piece. I don't know if I like it because it's kind of just weird. Almost. I don't know why. Uh, I thought it would like fix all my problems. And then it's like, oh, just here. <sighs> it's like, I don't know. And then like, you can also hear the wheel move. It's just. Like, if they would have added sound effect like they did for Romp Through the Swamp, if that would have had that, that would have been a perfect game. That probably would be number one game of all time if they put that sound box inside of him. Um, Yeah, please, Restoration, do that one. That would be crazy. I don't even know what, like, make that twice as big? I don't know. Would you, would we want that? I would want that. Yeah, that would be great. I don't know. Definitely, that would be a good one. To get to see some kind of update on it, see what they did with it. I think if it's coming, I don't think it's coming from restoration. I can imagine a reprint, a straight reprint, but I don't think gameplay wise, there's much else restoration can add to that other than a straight reprint. If they did a reprint of it from the pit, I would not only buy the reprint for me, but I would also buy another one and send it to get graded. I would this it's just that's a good one. Yeah. That that's probably one of the few I would probably have to send to get graded. Just because it's another one that'll eventually one day fade to nothingness and be worth a decent chunk of change, um, but also be just a good collectible. Oh, I I look on eBay regularly for a copy copy of It from the Pit and then weep at what people are asking for them. Another one that didn't come out over here in the UK, unfortunately. It is up there on the top most wanted list. I got crazy lucky. I think 30 bucks for the working copy that was missing pieces and like 20 bucks for the other copy or 15 for the other copy that um, didn't have a working or no, it did have a working guy, but barely any pieces, um, which completed my copy. Nice. I mean, you guys got games like It from the Pit, and we got like Give the Dog a Bone. You know, yeah. Oh, we got trash. You guys also had uh, Lost Battle of the Dinosaurs, which is crazy. Yeah, that is a good game. What Waddington's was our one saving grace. True. True. It certainly wasn't Peter Pan games. No. Definitely <laughs> not. I wonder what happens if I react. Ooh, did that show? It did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love hearts. Yeah, I'm a troll with it. All right, I'm good. <laughs> One more time. All right. You having fun there? Yeah. yeah. You want to wrap us up? 
Yeah, well, we've got, we're, we're nearly at the two-hour mark already. I cannot believe that. Yeah. So, here we go. Top 10 favourite slash best vintage board game artwork. There is a lot out there to choose from. It was hard even to get 10. There was so many more we could have put in for various different reasons. Again, it just kind of comes down to, I think, a lot of what we've been brought up with and in terms of movies as, as well. I think a lot of it, a lot of sci-fi elements, a lot of action adventure things, a lot of fantasy. And that seems to be reflected in our love of boxes and box artwork and board games. Because I know all three of us talk about the artwork on the board games because it is a very important um, aspect of them. Um, so yeah, that was it. Thanks very much for your time, guys. It's uh, been fun. And um, until next time, we will keep reviewing games. Barnardo, you have to review a game at some point. Yeah. Otherwise, gonna, Matt's going to cry. It's going to be a troll. No, Matt's actually just going to be angry in the comments. Like, about time. <laughs> He's still alive. I know. <laughs> There will be plenty more reviews from all of us, I'm sure. So until then, we're going to sign off. See you later. <laughs>